Good afternoon from the garden and welcome to today's video which is all about the different winter squash varieties that we grew this year about how they performed, which varieties are winners and which are losers. Winter squash is a very important crop for us because it is so easy to store, so versatile in the kitchen and so healthy to eat. Uh, every year we grow our, some of our old favorites but we also try new varieties and I am still on the lookout for the best winter squash for us to grow in our climate. The things that I'm looking for are, um, I like winter squash that are not too big, uh, what I call one meal squash or two meal squash at most, because we don't have a freezer. So if I uh, cut into a squash, I have to use it within a couple of days. Um, that's one thing. Obviously we want them to taste great, to keep well, but also to be productive. There are sometimes varieties that are really great producers, but the fruits are mediocre in taste and then are or sometimes also difficult to use with a very tough skin or very ripped, uh, so difficult to peel. So they're not the fruits that I will reach for uh, in the storage. And through trial and error, we figured out that the two, uh, two uh, groups of winter squash, there are so many different varieties that we like most are Hubbards and Butternuts. We have grown varieties from different winter squash groups in the past. I have several reviews on my channel from past years and I will link to those below. But in 2018, I think, one of my gardening goals was to do a butternut squash trial. Back then we trialed several varieties, but we grew even more this year. And I'll tell you all about how the different varieties performed, going from the biggest disappointments to the best producers. So let's dive in. Number one is a Hubbard. It's uh, this one, which is called Baby Blue. It's a small fruited Hubbard, though the fruits, oh, they keep rolling away. <laughs> I have stacked my squash really precariously. Um, it's quite a small fruited uh, variety, but um, they should not be quite as small as this one. And even though we gave this squash the prime spot on one of our compost heaps, the results are really disappointing. This is the total of our harvest. I have talked about growing uh, my trouble with growing Hubbards in the past. They have excellent qu eating quality. Uh, I love them for soups and other dishes, but they just never perform really well with us. And this is the at least the third year that I'm growing this particular variety and it has never, um, never really done better than this. So I think maybe it's time to count my losses and, and, and try different Hubbards maybe. I think I will um, try Uchiki Red Kuri, the orange, um, orange one next year probably, but uh, it does not seem like this one is worth growing. Another disappointment this year was this squash, which is called Anvers and um, it only gave us three fruits which have not even managed to ripen before the f uh, before our first frost somewhere in mid-October. Um, however, we have grown this squash in the past two years as well and back then it performed extremely well. It gave us 17 fruits in 2018 and nine fruits in uh, 2019. Sorry, yeah, 2019 per plant. Um, they're delicious, they have deep orange flesh, which is very sweet, ideal for cakes, but also good for other dishes. They keep very well. So um, all in all, it was a loser this year, but I will definitely grow it again next year. I do not know what went wrong this, uh, this time. Maybe it was not in an ideal spot. Maybe it got a little, too little um, <laughs> loving care from us. I don't know but long-term experience is that it can do well in our climate and we will grow it again. And it is the one that I would recommend, even though it has not performed well for us this year. And now moving on to the butternuts. I am not really concerned with taste in this, uh, uh, in this instance because I have not ever grown or tasted a butternut that I did not like. They're always good and another plus of butternuts is the ease of use. They have the, the, even though they keep well, the skin is not terribly thick and because it is so smooth and um, they're not ripped at all, it's very easy to peel. And also 
well, let's let's get another, <laughs> a more typical one. Um, there is a very the, the seed cavity is very small, so that means that you get a lot of usable flesh. Unlike in some other varieties where the cavity can be really large. The worst performer among the butternuts this year was Hunter. I keep, I keep confusing Hunter and Harrier because they're very similar. They're both British bred varieties. Um, but this year, Hunter, this one, performed really poorly. Uh, it only gave, uh, the plant only gave us three uh, tiny, weirdly shaped uh, fruits. Um, so that's a really pitiful harvest. However, when we grew it in 2018, I got six normally developed and um, fruits of the typical butternut shape. So this is an anomaly. It could also be a problem with the seed because Hunter, uh, Hunter is a hybrid and maybe uh, the, the seed is not really true to the was not really true to the variety. So um, even though it performed poorly, it is a variety that generally I would recommend for growing in cooler climates. Very similar to Hunter normally is Harrier. Both are British bred varieties, so they're suited normally to a, a little cooler climates. And this one gave us five um, fruits in total. Uh, they have the right shape and the uh, total yield was 3.3 kilos or 7 pounds uh, per plant, which is quite similar to the yields that we got in the previous years. Again, this is a uh, this is a good variety for cooler climates um, that I would recommend for growing, even though it was not the best performer this year. Slightly different in shape and in color is Anna, another butternut which starts, uh, the fruits start green, quite dark green, and then take a uh, turn ochre uh, in storage. This is the total of our harvest. So just two fruits and um, two kilos in total. We have grown Anna before, and it performed better. So um, again, I don't know what went wrong because the summer was really warm. So I thought the butternuts would love it, but uh, not a great result, but a pretty good variety when I look at our long-term results with growing it. Another variety, which is quite similar to Anna, both in color and in shape. It also has quite slender necks. And again, it starts it starts dark green and then turns ochre. This one is, um, these, these two are also, um, these three are also uh, the same variety. It's called Sonka. Um, the, only the fruits are a little smaller than with Anna. However, it gave us many more fruits. So the total harvest was, uh, at least this year, much better. It, the total harvest was seven fruits, 4.2 kilos in total. And, um, as far as I could find out, it's a, it's a Hungarian variety and the name Sonka is an abbreviation of Sonkatog, which apparently means um, ham squash or something like that. I don't know why, that, uh, why we call that. If there are any Hungarians watching, please enlighten me. I got the seeds from uh, Belgian gardener Lief and David, who said that it's the best butternut uh, in his experience. So I'm thankful to him and it's, uh, it's already also the second year that we grew it. Both years it did well, even though it did better last year than this year. Next is honey nut. These are all the fruits of honey, and not all the fruits that we grew, but uh, all of these fruits are of the same variety. It's a, a kind of ba baby sized butternut, really pretty. It starts also like green, uh, with, with green and, and ochre stripes. And then uh, the longer you store it, the more ochre it will turn. We grew this one up the trellis. We did a video in spring about the different varieties in which we grow with nut squash, winter squash. So I will link those below. This one we grew up the trellis and I think it's a variety that is very well suited to vertical growing because the fruits do not get too large. Uh, we got 15 fruits in total from two plants. And the total yield, again, from two plants was 8.7 kilos. So that's a, that's a pretty good result. The average weight of uh, the fruits is um, over half a kilo, <laughs> to 584 grams to be exact. Uh, so this is a very good size for um, people like 
who have one person, two person households. Again, the taste is excellent as, as with pretty much all the butternuts. I'm now getting to the top two performers and ironically, the second best performer this year is the squash that we have not planted at all. It is the one that grew spontaneously on our improvised compost heap from probably from seeds that we threw on it last year. It is quite similar to the honey nut in shape. It is, it is not the typical um, butternut shape, but I have already um, cooked with two of them. The taste is definitely um, butternutty and also the, the shape of the cavity inside is, is typical for butternuts. But um, it probably, it's probably seeds from squash that we grew last year, but because squash will hybridize, hybridize very easily and cross, uh, the different varieties will cross. So this is probably a result of some um, crossing between the varieties that we grew last year. But um, even though it had a slow start because it, can, it only um, started growing when the temperatures outside were high enough, unlike the uh, butternut squash which we pre-sow on the windowsill, it gave us five um, ripe fruits. There were many more unripe fruits, but we had five fruits with um, which weighed 1200 grams in, on average. So that's about double the double the weight of the honey nuts and the total yield was 6.3 kilos from the plant. Um, I am tempted to keep the seeds and try growing them again next year but probably they will cross again with another butternut so uh, it's, a, it's a question what, um, what would happen but maybe it's, it's a fun project to do. And now on to the winner of our 2020 winter squash growing experiment. It's this huge and pretty one uh, variety called Barbara. By far the largest of the butternuts that we grew with fruits um, of 2.3 kilos on average. Uh, we had a yield of eight fruits of total from one plant, which means the weight of all the fruits um, combined was 18.4 kilos or 40 pounds per plant and that means it's like it's, it's more than twice the second best performer. The fruits are quite a bit larger than I normally grow but since it's such a since it performs so well and the taste is good as well we have already eaten one I think this is definitely one to recommend and um, we will keep growing it in the years to come. On my blog last year or the year before I wrote a blog post about how I deal with large butternuts. I usually use them for several dishes so I will link to that post below and I'm also thinking that maybe I should do a um, compilation of all the winter squash recipes on my website and if I uh, do that I will also link to that below. So our total yield from all the different varieties that we grew was about 45 kilos or close to 100 pounds which seems a lot but since we'll be eating them throughout the winter don't worry every last one will get eaten. I hope you enjoyed today's winter squash review. If you did please give the video a thumbs up and let me know in the comments what your favorite varieties are to grow and also if you have any particularly good recipes that you would recommend. I would love to hear that too. Happy gardening!